Voxel. Hello Voxel fans. Today we're going to look at giving animation a more realistic feeling in VoxEdit using a technique called follow through. This episode is sponsored by the Sandbox Creator Fund. The artists of the Creator Fund are hard at work populating the marketplace with amazing models and animations to create a whole ecosystem when the Sandbox launches later this year. If you're interested in learning more about the Sandbox, how it will use blockchain in the marketplace, or how you can join the team of artists getting the game ready for launch, visit sandbox.game or check out the links in the description. If you're just joining this series of animation lessons for VoxEdit, I suggest starting from at least lesson four. Or if you're totally new to building voxels, you can start at the beginning of the VoxEdit playlist for a brief introduction and then detailed explanations of every button and feature. If you don't already have a file ready to follow along, you can download the XB folder from Dropbox, extract all the contents, and open him up with VoxEdit version 0.12.0 or later. Now we need to give his top shell some physics. It's just sitting there, but this shell isn't glued onto the top of his head like a hat. It should be bouncing along with every step. Animators call this follow through. It's when the effects of physics start moving secondary objects on a figure. Here, the legs and the bottom shell are the primary objects, creating the overall motion, then affecting the secondary objects, in this case, just the top shell. So how should this move? Basically, whenever a primary motion happens, a secondary motion should follow, but lag behind a couple frames. Because of the way VoxEdit's timeline works, and because there's no onion skin feature that lets us see multiple frames yet, we're going to make these frames line up with the other keyframes, and then offset them. But first, we're going to correct an oversight. If you just downloaded XP, this is already fixed in your file. I had the pivot point for the top shell centered, but we want it to pivot from the back like a clamshell. So I'm going to click the pencil to edit the model, and using the pivot tool, move it back so the z-axis reads 9. Then we click the rig button to go back, and don't forget to save. This moved the shell position relative to the rig, so making sure I'm on frame 0, I grab the Z, Y axis control and move it back so both read 3.5. This also affected the other animations, so I have to fix it on all of them. This is why it's important to make sure you're happy with the pivot point before making all of your animations. We're also going to enlarge the shell to 101%. This will prevent what is called Z fighting, which is when faces line up perfectly and fight for which one will render in front. This is a common issue with voxel art, because everything lines up flat on a grid. Just a slight scale up of 1% will ensure that the shell never z-fights with the top of his head. Now that this is fixed, we can begin our new animation, which I've duplicated from run 2 and called run 3. Starting with the down animation at frame 0, let's rotate the shell down on the x-axis to 357 degrees. This makes the shell close entirely over Xby's face. Now we're going to duplicate that key by pressing the new key button with the playhead on frames 12 and 24. Next we want to set the high point, where the shell almost flies off of the head. On frames 6 and 18, we'll manually turn the shell up on the x-axis to about 22. The rotations listed in the transformation panel will read a little weird because of the way his body is twisted but this will be close enough to what we need. If we hit play, we can tell his motion looks to be in the right place, but the timing doesn't feel natural. First, we'll want to set the acceleration on each part to quad ease in out to match the bounce in his step. Then we want to slide all of the keys forward two frames. This gives the shell a split second to react to the change in direction. But now the end of the bounce goes past the one second frame. How do we fix this? Well, we need to manually keyframe several positions to make sure this keeps the same flow. Because we can't move the first keyframe, we'll add a new one on frame 2. This new frame is already in the correct position, but we do need to reset the motion after to quad ease and out because it defaulted to linear. Now to the end of the timeline, place the playhead at frame 25 and make sure that the top node is selected. In the transform panel, it shows us what the rotation is on this frame, which is 358.4 degrees on the x-axis. Right-click on the value and click copy, then move the playhead to frame 1, 
right click the rotation value, and paste it. We are manually looping the end of the animation back to the beginning, but because of the mandatory first keyframe and quad easing, leaving frame 1 to the automatic value would screw up the flow. Moving the playhead to frame 21, we need to write down all of the degrees till frame 24. Again, this is because the quad easing curve is messed up when we move the keyframes around. It would recalculate to the new keyframe if we simply cut the animation at frame 24, so we have to manually input each frame in this section to mimic the old curve. Frame 21 is at 20.4 degrees, then 16.3, 9.5, and 2.5. The Y and Z values are all automatic, so we can just ignore those. Now, we'll set the key on frame 1 to 2.5 degrees, and move the final key back to frame 24, and make that 2.5 degrees as well. Back to adding in the manual frames, go ahead and set the playhead to the correct position, and add back in the frame values we wrote down. Some of them may automatically adjust a tenth of a degree or so, but that's just the program being picky. Hit play, and there we go. That shell is looking clunky and awesome. Adding these little physical nuances can not only make your animations really come to life, but can add another element of humor to silly models like Eggsby. I hope this lesson gives you a lot of ideas on how to make your characters in box edit really pop off the screen. If you found it helpful, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications of new Voxelize episodes. Thank you for watching.